Fred here, and you're watching the Gear Obsession channel. In this episode, we'll be taking a look at the Buck Canoe. Model 389, there are various variants of this knife. This one actually is a little harder to find. As a matter of fact, I can't find it anywhere on the internet right now. And it has these scales that look like bone or stag. The most common one out there right now is the one made out of wood. You could uh, get these for about 20 bucks, not too expensive at all, and it has that classic look to blades. But we're going to go ahead and take a close look at this. If you're interested in interested in this at any time uh, check out the description box below you'll find the specification features as well as a link on Amazon to purchase this for around 20 bucks also another link to all the different canoe knives uh, on Amazon and they're made by a lot of different companies not just buck you could find them from charade and case kissing crane uh, Rough Rider, Boker, and many, many more. So can anyone tell me why they call this the canoe? Well, if you sort of uh, take away the blades there, it sort of looks like a canoe. Like the Native Indians used to ride in. Pretty cool. The uh, canoe is a pattern. It's not a specific model to buck. A lot of companies make the canoe pattern. The canoe pattern's been around for over a century, and this pattern evolved from one of the earliest pocket knife patterns, which namely is the equal end, probably because this end looks equal to this end. Uh, most canoe knives have two blades. You'll normally find a, um, we'll go ahead and take these out, two spear point type blades, one being the spear point here, and one being a pen blade, or pen, what you would find on a pen knife. So these knives would make great EDC knives, would make awesome gifts, especially to someone who it would be their first knife. Hint, hint, you know anybody, family members that don't have a knife? Uh, this one is not scary or intimidating. It's a old school, everyday carry kind of knife. And if you live in a knife oppressive country such as the UK, sorry guys, um, this knife will pass. Uh, you should be able to legally carry this because it's a slip joint. It doesn't lock and it's small. The large blade is only two and a half inches. So it should be good. I'm not a lawyer or anything, so please check your local knife laws. But it should be okay to carry in the UK. So, uh, first characteristic here are the silver nickel bolsters nice and shiny they closed or the closed length of this knife when everything is uh, pocketable is three and five eighths inches when everything is closed so it's very compact very nice looking uh, like i said it's a slip joint nothing locks as you can see there there is no middle stop right there the weight of this is only 2.7 ounces, so very lightweight, pop it in your pocket, you wouldn't even know it's there. So the handle material, this is either bone or stag of some sort. Uh, you can see it sort of has like a corn cob jigging going on there. It's called a jigging pattern, you'll see different types of patterns in this. This one uh, to me looks like corn cob. And uh, the shield. It's not nailed on or pinned on in any way. It's just glued on there. And I know that uh, for some people, they don't like that. They want to see pins in there. They're afraid that might come out. And in some cases, it could come out if it's not properly affixed or glued to here, to the uh, scale there. Um, as far as craftsmanship here, one of the things you will see right away if craftsmanship is not very good is you'll see gaps between the bolster and the scale. And in this example... It looks really good. Um, there is a little bit. You can see how my nail catches that right there. But uh, for the most part, it's pretty good for a $20 knife. I did have to go through a couple to find one really good. There, there was one really bad that had a really bad gap right in here. Where it was like coming off or away from the springs here. So quality is uh, hit and miss 
to be honest. I had to go through three. This was the best one that I got my local Walmart. By the way, these are not listed on the Walmart website, so that's why I provided links to Amazon instead. So let's talk about the steel. This is another area that people might not like. Uh, it is 420J2 stainless steel, both of these blades. I'm going to go ahead and pull these both out and risk life and limb. I might have to zoom out just a little bit. Your main blade, the spear point, is two and a half inches. The pen blade on the other side, one and seven eighths inches. And the, the 420J2 steel is what a lot of people would consider a low quality U.S. made stainless steel. It's usually, usually used for liners or, or handles on a knife, not generally used for the blade itself. And the reason why is it's, it's kind of soft. The max HRC that you would typically see 420J2 get up to is no more than 55 max. So, you know, there, there's a give and take going on here. But because it's a softer blade, because it's softer material, it's tougher. That means that if, if the blade does give up, it'll, it will sort of bend a little and not chip, which makes it tougher. It's a, it's a give and take. You could have brittle and hard, a high HRC, where it'll hold that edge. Or you could have a softer, where you could sharpen it easier and it won't chip. And keep in mind, if the blade is, is very hard, like an HRC of 60, it's very hard to sharpen. So what you're getting here, because it's softer, is... It's tougher, easier to sharpen, and of course it's a cheaper, uh, inexpensive steel, which brings the cost of the knife down. Another point to bring out about the stainless steel is that it is very corrosive resistant, which is pretty cool. So, the cons, you know, it is softer, so it doesn't hold an edge as long, but it's easier to sharpen. A lot of book knives are made in the USA, unfortunately. This is not one of them, it's made in China. Now to deploy this knife, you got to use these nail nicks, as you can see right there. That means you put your nail in there if you have nails, which I don't, and it pops out. No half stops on any of these. You do get a little bit of a sharpening choil right there. Really, um, I wouldn't even consider that a sharpening choil. If you try to sharpen this on a stone, you're going to butt the, the shoulder up against the stone. Hollow grind about three quarters of the way up. And again, both of these are essentially spear points. So let's go ahead and see how well it's sharpened from the factory. I have my notes here that I'll sacrifice. And another good point about 420J2 is that it can be sharpened to a very, very good, very sharp edge because it's push cutting right there. That is very, very sharp. And I do have a little bit of hair because I'm a hairy guy. And yeah, it's shaven. So this is razor, razor sharp. Very sharp. Sharpy, make sharp face. Before we wrap things up, I'll let you take a close look at the knife. So one other thing to point out, there's nothing rubbing or anything like that. I don't see the any marks on the blades themselves as if they were rubbing next to each other because um, it's kind of hard. I mean eventually they do touch each other on knives like these but um, no problem and lock up retention you know there's no side to side play and up and down up until when that slip joint gives out because it is a slip joint and again no middle stop there. So this is not a super high quality knife. This is a a beater knife a good first knife for somebody um, an inexpensive stocking stuffer or gift it's a uh, sharp sharpie mcsharp face <laughs> it's a great knife definitely worth 20 bucks uh, again i provided the link on amazon for the version that has the wood scales because i can't find this one with i i don't know if this is real bone, real stag, or synthetic. I'm willing to bet because of the price. It's probably like some sort of plastic simulation, but it is pretty hard. I tried to make a mark with my nail on this, and it's not marking it, so I really don't know for sure. And there's 
limited information on this version with this scale. Really weird. But the wood ones I was able to find, so if you want a wood one, <laughs> I, I did the link in the uh, description box on Amazon along with a uh, a search for all canoe, no canoe knives on Amazon. So you can click on either of those. Look around, see if any of them tickle your fancy canoe. All right, well, thank you very much for joining me here at the Gear Obsession channel. <laughs> I really appreciate every friend, viewer, subscriber, and especially you. And I hope you have a great day. Take care. Bye. <laughs>